Can we just take a minute to really look at what Hibiki just confirmed he likes to do? And that is, make probably terrible decisions that are based on emotion, because this man decided to lock away a duster in his closet. Which, hey, you know what? He wants to be friends with people, that's in his character, but it's like, when she comes out, and you're just thinking like, why does this man have some, like, cute girl in his closet? Like, what's, what, what is, what is Hibiki up to? And then you see how crazy his sister secretly is deep down inside. This man does not have a good track record with women. Because one of which might kill him, depending on the mood swing. Or might kiss him, depending on the mood swing. The sister, seemingly at face value, wants him to be as far away from the craziness as possible. But if you throw her a lifeline saying that, oh, actually you have a bit of psychotic energy yourself. She's basically screaming and moaning your name on a children's playground. You heard me. Just when you think you know what to expect from this show, our boy D infiltrates as Hibiki and learns this place is way more crazy than we first thought. I thought the reason it was a little more loud for him and he was complaining about the noise was that maybe the dusters had just better hearing than your average human. This man had a goddamn duster in his broom closet and i have to imagine a lot of that was due to his own hormones getting flared up around her this show's fantastic full live reaction over on patreon if you want to see my full link of thought to this or any of these go go loser ranger episodes it's gonna be over there exclusively so we couldn't watch last week uh some sporting event i think it might have been tennis took up this time slot in japan is what it is but we're back and boy is this getting better than I first thought? Now, there is a lot of like subtle, smaller details that really reinforce just how good the writing is. But of course, the bigger moments are going to be the star attraction for many people's discussion. The sister stuff, psychotic, crazy, super interested in that. You have this girl hiding in the closet who is seemingly in love with Hibiki. I mean, when she thought it was Hibiki pinning her down, she might have been acting at first being like, oh, what are you doing? You shouldn't be... But she was... I feel like she's been waiting for this moment probably since the day she met Hibiki. It was wild. And when she hears that he's still alive, she smiles. I mean, there's... There's something going on there, but I imagine Hibiki's too dense to realize it if we're being honest. I think honestly though, just like that whole dynamic of having... Thinking that, like, oh shit, you know, she's assuming that she's the last fighter, she needs to rise above, here's another one, immediate respects, bows down, let's, let's take care of this together, and then immediately is ready to kill her boy. He cuts her heads off and throws it in a box, just so he can have a afternoon snack with Hibiki's sister, who turns out to be the Pink Ranger. Which is interesting, because she's clearly in a wheelchair, but if she transforms, she's pretty much back to normal. I mean, I have to wonder if part of the reason she's more okay with becoming psychotic was that so she could still be able to walk at some points, because obviously, without the divine artifact, she's, you know, she's in a wheelchair for life. Though she also does seem crazy, but maybe just being around this organization long enough corrupts you to the point of becoming crazy, not that she always was. But either way, that, that bitch is wild. So the thing is, is they end the episode. You know, there's, throughout the episode, it feels like she's noticing things. And it feels more, actually, by the end of the episode, that she was just more or less examining her brother to see, has my brother finally matured? Has he woke up? Because after she kicks some thug's ass in the park, she's basically super, like drooling as happy as can be i can't believe how much my brother's grown up and just it's a little bro con sis con energy if we're being honest but even if it's not she just crazy man you put yourself in hibiki's shoes for a second and you have to ask yourself did he realize how crazy the girls around his life actually were or was he oblivious to it all the poor bastard just wants to make the most peaceful future possible for, for dusters, for humans, dragon keepers alike. And he's just surrounded by crazy. His best friend, mind you, is a dude that's infiltrating on his behalf and he had to cut his arm off in order for that. To he does not have a good track record with people. Like everyone tries to kill him or hurt him or use him in some way. And I honestly went from thinking Hibiki was the weakest of the characters out of the central initial three between Crazy Blonde, D, and him to thinking he's maybe the most interesting because his life is an absolute maze that I am so interested to navigate. The sister scene was wild though. Um, She brings four apples to the room and I don't understand how they made it so intimidating 
because they start off making it feel like she's useless, like she's having trouble cutting the apple. And I'm like, oh man, you know, from the accident, she probably still has like low motor skills and it's really, and then it becomes like threatening with knives to the point of just like, I... even before the park scene, I was like, I don't have good feelings about the sister. But after the park scene, I thought to myself, my boy, your parents joined a cult, your sister a psychopath, and you're too nice for this world. How in God's name have you survived up to this point? Just wild stuff, man. Wild stuff for days. And the new character we did get introduced to, though, the uh, the female Duster, I, have, I love her character design. I think she's awesome. And her VA was even better. So when she's in her normal voice, which is kind of like threatening, intimidating, great performance, but then when she gets more cutesy, you swear it's a different VA. Like, the fluctuation in range was so top tier, and for having such a subtle change in her character expressions, like a little more blushing, a little more embarrassed, it just made it all the more adorable. I have no idea where we go. I do expect that Hibiki's form is going to be the main one he uses going forward, but... Based on the opening, you do see D's face change a lot, so I imagine you'll have different forms he uses for different situations a part of this. But time will tell. The biggest question I have is what the hell is the real one going to do? All we saw of him was wash his face in the river after his hand has been cut off, so what is he going to be up to? I imagine something, but, uh, you know, they did a smart thing with the introduction to all these new characters, is that they gave him a little mission to, like, hand out these ID cards, so he knew the face, he knew, like, who to look out for. But of course, because he broke the laptop, he didn't really have, like, he didn't know how to interact with people because he didn't read up on the notes, which makes sense. I mean, he didn't even really know how to use a laptop to begin with, let alone, you know, turn it on to read notes and stuff. But I like the fact that rather than it just being like, here's a generic info dump, it's like he had to awkwardly navigate the halls and hand out those things, which let us get a kind of visual idea of who we're going to interact with, which is a pretty large cast all things considered. This was a really good episode, but they casually keep dropping plot twists, like the sister being Pink Ranger and psychotic, but the fact that Hibiki of all characters has been keeping a baddie in a closet. Did, did he realize he was probably doing it because of hormones? Probably not. I do believe he just wants to help everyone, and that was a solution, but... I have a feeling his pants region made part of that decision, if I'm being honest. But, uh, bless Hibiki, man. A character I thought would be the most generic whatever, maybe even the first death of the show, turned into having the most important plot relevance in the show outside of D, if we're being honest. Let me know what you thought down below, because this was absolutely wild, and I did not see that coming. But thoughts down below, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, of course, ring that bell so you know if I went upload more, like I mentioned, full live reactions over on Patreon, and hey, why over there, I'll also give you a video shout out. Alright, so today we got B. Mokif, Brittany Henquitz, Todd A. Goldweight, Pedalo, One Piece Man, and Nicholas Wilhelm. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.